There is some really, and I mean really good news for Colorado heading into this game. Almost every single time a team comes off a win in a game in which they shouldn't have won, for example, a Hail Mary, anything like that, they almost nine times out of 10 win the next game or the next couple of games. Why they do it? Because they feel like God, the world, and everybody's on their side and they can't do anything wrong and that's how they play. And whenever you feel like you can't do anything wrong, you let your nuts hang and just by default, that's normally when you play your best. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hope all of you having a great week. If not, hope this video can make it a little bit better. And man, oh man, it feels like it's been forever since I said this. And now I think about it, it has been forever. We got another late night primetime Colorado video. We haven't said that primetime intro in a minute, and I ain't gonna hold y'all. I've kind of missed it. Speaking of Colorado, shout out to the Colorado football team. Three and one, how about that? Shout out to the Colorado fan base, still supporting their team heavily. And the funny thing about them is you can hate them, you can like them, doesn't matter. You're still going to watch. Are they a serious college football playoff contender? Heck to the no. But they are one of the most entertaining teams in all of college football, and you can't deny that. And for that reason right there, it's why we talk about them. And before we go any farther, let me say this, because we haven't talked about Colorado in a while. I think it's been about a week now. Well, we did do the reaction video, but I'm talking about besides that, just making one of these types of videos. Unless you've been living under a rock, you either A, saw it live like myself, or B, you saw the highlights, Colorado beat Baylor on an insane Hail Mary. Well, technically, that didn't win them the game, but it was arguably the biggest play of the game. I said it in the reaction video. I'm going to say it again here. Colorado was the luckiest team in America last weekend, and they had to have the Irish on their side or something. The amount of tomfoolery that had to happen for Colorado to win that game was on another level. Three major things had to happen. Number one, if Baylor makes that chip shot field goal... The Hail Mary doesn't even matter, but Baylor winds up missing the field goal with two minutes and change to go. Shadir Sanders gets the ball to around the 45-50 yard line, throws up the Hail Mary. Colorado catches it, but still, even with catching that, you gotta go into OT. Colorado scores first in overtime, and it's looking like Baylor's gonna score right back at them. They got it first and goal on the one yard line, and they fumble the ball. And we know who forced the fumble. We actually talked about this a little bit in one of yesterday's videos. Travis Hunter. That was one of those good old-fashioned, uh, yeah, we got away with this one type of ball games. But like they say in golf, there's no pictures on the scorecard. In this analogy, there's no pictures or videos on the record sheet. You're three and one. It doesn't matter how you got to three and one. Doesn't matter if it was pretty. Doesn't matter if it was ugly. You're three and one. So I did want to start the video by giving Colorado some recognition and a congratulations to the fan base, the team, the program, everybody involved and associated with them. Because I think we sometimes forget since they've gotten Dion and Dion's known as a winner. Colorado was the worst program in all of college football only a couple years ago. And even though I still believe they're a below average football team, I'll get to all that in just a second. In Dion's second season, to be 3-1, and one, it's a pretty good start. With all that great stuff being said, let's get into this preview. I haven't even looked at the line for this game. I'm just going to assume Colorado, they're probably a 10-point underdog. Pulling it up right here, and wow, that's a pretty big deficit. UCF is favored by 14.5 points. That seems like a lot to me. To give you some context and perspective, I'm sure many of you know what that means, but for those of you that don't, I consider being favored by anything more than 12, 13 points means the media and everybody in general, they think you're about to get blown out. I'm not going to sit up here and say that Colorado being a 14 and a half point underdog is insane, but it is shocking to me. I thought that line was going to be around anywhere from 9 to 11 points. It's actually fluctuated between 14 and 15. So there's that. And I know we got a bunch of Colorado fans watching this video, but... Let's talk about UCF a little bit, and let me tell you about them. UCF isn't looking too bad this year. I don't think they're anything special, but they're 3-0. They started out the season with two cupcakes, and then recently, last week, they had a major comeback win against TCU. That was a crazy game start to finish, and here's a fun fact for you. UCF's quarterback is former SEC and former Arkansas quarterback, KJ Jefferson. That's a name that should ring some bells because he's been playing college football for what seems like forever at this point. KJ Jefferson can play. It's no secret. This UCF offense, they're going to put up points. Their defense to me isn't questionable. They're just simply not that good. I'd give UCF's defense after watching that performance against TCU average at best. The good news for Colorado is UCF allowed 402 passing yards to TCU's quarterback Josh Hoover. And we all know Shadur Sanders is one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. He has weapons on that offense with Travis Hunter, Jimmy Horn Jr. 
he should have a field day. Although I don't think UCF's defense is good, I still think they're better than Colorado's because Colorado's defense is atrocious. They're awful. And you're probably sitting here thinking, well, dang, Matt, it sounds like we got two fairly similar teams, and we do. Good offenses and not so good defenses. With Colorado, you don't need me to even run through it. You know what they got. Shadur Sanders, Travis Hunter, Jimmy Horner Jr., a couple others, that's it. They're an AAU football team. They're not a real deal serious football team. It's just like AAU basketball. Got a couple great players, and that's all there is to be said. Like I said, defense is awful, and I still believe Colorado, at best, is an average football team. When it comes to star talent, I think Colorado has much better players. However, when it comes to talent top to bottom, depth-wise, I'd take UCF. UCF is a more sound football team. Let's talk about the quarterbacks, though, in KJ Jefferson and Shadur Sanders. Both guys, ironically enough, are in a similar situation. They've been playing college football forever. They got a ton of experience, the veteran leadership, everything you're looking for. As to where it stands right now, if I was drafting a college football team, what quarterback would I choose? Most definitely Shadur. Jefferson has a tendency to turn the ball over sometimes and make some disastrous decisions. Shadur Sanders is much smarter with the football, and he's not going to go out there and lose you a game, and he's proven this. He can go out there and win you a game. With KJ Jefferson, although, yeah, I think he can win you a game, make some unreal plays, he can also make some terrible plays. I like Shadur in the quarterback matchup, but, and I have a big but, if you don't listen to a single other part of this video, please listen to this part. I think KJ Jefferson might outduel and might put up better numbers than Shadur Sanders due to offensive line play. That Colorado offensive line is straight up doo doo cheeks. They are hot garbage. Shadur Sanders makes some of the most insane plays I've ever seen, and he has to have like 20 or 30 of those plays per game just for Colorado to compete in the game. I think UCF's offense line is better in Colorado, so KJ Jefferson may have a little bit more time to pass and make some plays. One thing you've got to pay attention to, and I think it's going to be the X factor, is the ground game. We all know this. Colorado has zero ground game. There's no reason to talk about it. Their running backs are irrelevant. They're not going to run the ball, and even if they wanted to, they can't, so there's not much to be said. On the flip side for UCF, not only can they run the football, but they want to. Their leading rusher on the year, R.J. Harvey, through three games, almost has 450 yards and eight touchdowns. Their quarterback, Jefferson, he is also a dual-threat quarterback and runner himself, so you got to account for him. Where am I going with this? I think UCF is simply going to wear down that Colorado defense, and they're going to try to keep Shadur off the field. I was thinking about it heading into this video. I don't know how Colorado stops them. Colorado can't stop the run. They have a terrible secondary. They're just not good. And when you're not good, and you're playing an offense that is good, that's not a recipe for success. Outside of Shadur's offensive line being one of the worst in the nation, I'm not worried about Colorado offensively. I think they'll score. I know I haven't talked about him a lot, but I feel like it goes out being said. Travis Hunter, he is going to do Travis Hunter things. He's going to make numerous, not just one, but numerous big plays all throughout every single game this season. On offense, they will find ways to get him the ball, and on defense, he will go get the ball himself. When it's all said and done, though, here's what it comes down to for me. I pick teams that I trust. You probably know where I'm going with this. I don't trust Colorado, and I don't know why anyone else would. You want to know why I don't trust them? Because this isn't a good football team, and they're not even close to it. And it's not because I think UCF is a good football team. It's more so of, I think they're better in Colorado. Before you go, let me end off the video with this. There is some really, and I mean really good news for Colorado heading into this game. They have something that only some teams can dream of. And that is a ton of momentum heading into this matchup. Almost every single time a team comes off a win in a game in which they shouldn't have won, for example, a Hail Mary, anything like that, they almost 9 times out of 10 win the next game or the next couple of games. Why they do it? Because they feel like God, the world, and everybody's on their side and they can't do anything wrong and that's how they play. And whenever you feel like you can't do anything wrong, you let your nuts hang and just by default, that's normally when you play your best. I think Colorado is going to give UCF their best shot, but I just can't pick a team I do not trust. I do think it's going to be way closer than what the spread's currently at. I'll take UCF in this one, 38 to Colorado's 31. 38-31, that's my score prediction. I like that, and I'm curious. Let me know your thoughts and all this down below. But, uh, Roman!